Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about All Fours by Miranda July. I'm not officially doing the National Book Award long list, but there are a few on there that I was like, do you know what? I'm going to check them out, slash I might see if I can read the entirety of the shortlist when it's announced, because there's a very small window between when the long list for the National Book Award is announced and then the shortlist is announced. So I just looked at the list and went, what have I, what, what should I give a go? And this one just popped out to me, so yeah. The novel follows a middle-aged protagonist who feels somewhat stifled by her somewhat predictable life and her marriage and her kid. It all just feels very samey. Her relationship with her husband, Harris, whilst outwardly seeming quite stable, she is in need of more passion and more desire in her life, which leads her to kind of seek out those things. Since becoming a mother, she hasn't had as much time as she normally gets to work on her work. She's an artist and works on various projects in different mediums, and she is seeking a little bit of respite. And her husband encourages her uh, to take a three-week road trip to New York where she needs to talk to this very famous pop artist about a possible collaboration together. Uh, and she's been, yeah, she's been stuck, or well, not really stuck, but just in the routine of being a mother, being a wife, and trying to juggle her own professional career and yet she needs a break so she decides to take this road trip pretty much on her first stop on this road trip I mean I can't remember the exact mileage but I think she's like 30 miles away from where she lives uh, she stops for gas and there's a car rental place nearby and this guy starts cleaning her windshield his name is Davey and she automatically just connects with him something stirs within her so deep is this connection and this wanting and desire she decides to cancel her road trip and decides to stay in the Excelsior Motel. But she wants to make it feel bougie. She wants to stay there at this motel for the next two weeks. Because she's fairly well off and quite known in her career and in certain circles as an artist, she is pretty famous. She decides to spend a whopping $20,000 doing up this motel room. And she employs this woman and the woman just happens to be the wife of the guy Davy, who she's sort of fallen for. So the room gets done up beautifully. There is a lot of time spent in this room and a lot of detail in this novel about how this novel needs to replicate a sort of Parisian hotel that our protagonist once stayed in. And once she's there and settled, she starts sort of pursuing this contact and connection with Davy. And while Davy doesn't exactly reciprocate her sexual sort of advances, they do start to connect. They do start spending a lot of time with each other. They start sneaking around. There is a moment involving a tampon. And if you know, you know. But they start doing things together that definitely cross the line within both their marriages. And Davy almost believes that this is just a little microcosmic moment that they're sharing together. And that when she leaves, that will be it done. But he is so happy that they were able to sort of find each other. I think I missed out as well that Davy actually knew who she was when he was sort of cleaning her windshield. He's been a fan of her work for ages. He's an artist, a dancer himself, that kind of thing. Um, they definitely really, well, they don't just sort of tiptoe over the line. They fucking fly way past the line as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, but they never actually have sex. The issue is that now our protagonist has opened up something in herself that she just can't stop. She goes back home to her husband and nothing feels the same. She goes to a doctor and she finds out that she is premenopausal and that something to do with her sex drive basically is going to start diminishing from this point on. And she gets it into her head that she must explore all these feelings and all these desires that she's having. She then ends up with her husband. They start talking about going into an open marriage and start dating other people but sort of staying together for their kid. And the novel sort of builds from there and progresses from there. And really, it's just a novel about the inner struggle of a middle-aged woman who's premenopausal, trying to understand what her life is and trying to sort of come to terms with exploring and being satisfied with her sexual desires. Overall, this novel is exploring themes around freedom, identity, sexual identity, and sort of conventional domestic roles. One thing to definitely note when going into this novel is our narrator doesn't hold back. It is a very, very honest account about what this middle-aged woman is feeling, and it goes deep, deep, deep into sexual desires. It involves urination, uh, as I've mentioned, a tampon moment, and, and various different sort of like sex to It really, really goes there, and it doesn't hold back. Uh, and you're either going to love that or you're going to hate that in its kind of utter honesty about what this woman is feeling and what she needs in her life. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked? Well, I've already kind of mentioned it, but I really liked how 
honest this novel is. At times that can make it seem a little bit silly, at times it can make it feel like we're we're lingering a bit too long on certain areas, at times it can maybe feel like it's a little bit whiny, especially as our protagonist is very very wealthy, and at times I was just screaming at the book, please just get over yourself, you middle class art wanker. However, because the honesty is so unflinching and it's so raw and it's so consistent, uh, I had to give the novel props eventually for just sort of winning me over in the sense that this nameless protagonist is just going to throw everything at us and we just have to take it and find any connections from what's being thrown at us, we can. Another thing I really enjoyed is the emotional growth of this novel. Um, I thought she goes on a real journey and sometimes she sort of loops back and ends up where she started and then she pushes a little bit further uh, but it just keeps building and building and building and at times that can be frustrating with some of the decisions she's making and at other times it can be really cathartic and I can really really relate with where she's at. But we do see that progression for better or worse. It is absolutely nuanced. At times she's trying to have her cake and eat it too and that just does not work. And then jealousy comes into play and we sort of feel it all. And I feel like, yeah, the, the journey that she goes on was really rich, detailed, and I enjoyed it. Especially, you know, if you can get over the fact that it's incredibly self-indulgent and at times frustrating, yeah, that unflinching raw look at what she wants and she needs and how that does shift and that does change and she doesn't always get her own way in moments uh, and feeling the impact of these sort of step backs these setbacks that she's presented with yeah I really yeah I really went on that journey and enjoyed it for the most part I felt like the secondary characters characters like Harris her husband and Davy her love interest uh, they were really well developed I say really well developed they were developed and they were layered I would have liked a little bit more from both of them I think they both could have been pushed a bit further but this isn't really a novel about them we are so firmly in our protagonist's head that we are just experiencing these characters through the way that she experiences them and considering that's our point of view I feel like they were given a good amount of depth I was really able to sort of feel for Harris in moments but also understand Harris's decisions uh, and his sort of movements throughout the novel and the same with Davy as well uh, I, you know there was parts of me wanting them to be painted a little bit richer but overall all, uh, they weren't flat at all and they did as the novel progressed I did feel that change in that arc happen. I also thought the writing style was solid. It's witty, it's funny, uh, it's darkly humorous at times and it flows really well all the way throughout. And finally what I really enjoyed about this book is actually realising how ignorant I am of menopause. I know what menopause is but I don't know all the side effects of menopause. I don't know exactly what a woman's body goes through and what happens to her and at what stages and when. I don't know any of those things. I just kind of know what you know what menopause is but I didn't yeah didn't know all those sort of details about it and yeah I felt quite educated in that moment and um yeah, I thought it was all really, really sort of interesting to sort of be inside a character's head while she's experiencing these things. What didn't I like? First thing I didn't like is pacing wise, it's a little uneven. Uh, that, that first half of the book, it, it doesn't drag at all. I was really engaged, but it sort of has a, a very set pace stylistically in sort of how we're in her head and what's happening narratively. And then it sort of, she leaves the motel and it just starts moving at this incredible pace and she starts like doing these things and it was a bit it was so uneven that it was a bit of a kind of like a shock to the system when it started changing gears now I could see that the novel maybe did need to change gears but there's something within the style of it that just didn't sit right so for me I'm reading it and I'm going this is a bit all over the shop pacing wise so these moments are being really drawn out really introspective we're taking loads of time on this single scene in this one moment and now we're skipping across weeks in like you know half a page and yeah that just felt a little bit like oh and the next thing I didn't like is I did at times with the style that's chosen feel a little bit emotionally distanced from our protagonist that's not to say that I didn't go on an emotional journey with her that I didn't sort of experience these things and sort of understand her change and her shift but there are times in which because I felt like you know how pretentious our uh protagonist was I did feel a little bit sort of disconnected and not able to fully sort of empathize in moments which is a shame because sometimes I could connect and sometimes I really couldn't and there's like this book can be a little bit silly at times uh, in what it's exploring uh, which is absolutely fine um, and I quite enjoyed those moments but I think they sometimes came at the cost of a kind of richer deeper emotional connection um, so yeah 
Dustin, that's, yeah, just a, as I said, I'm a bit uneven on that one because when I think back on the book and I think what I went through with this character being in her head, I really did experience an emotional journey. But when I think about kind of like truly connecting to character and understanding her, not really. Sometimes she made decisions that I was just like, okay, right, that's, that's coming out of nowhere. And I didn't really feel any kind of like, you know, breadcrumb payoff sort of thing leading to some decisions. So, yeah. And my final sort of dislike, and this will differ for different readers, is I felt like I needed a little bit more, a little bit more resolution. I'm okay uh, being with a character who ends up sort of stuck in her desires. And then there are bits of resolution, so I don't think I'm sort of spoiling anything here. But, you know, she does sort of feel stuck in this moment. And maybe that's just because we're ending where this character is and there could be another book <laughs> in which we explore the, that next sort of stage. Um, however... Uh, yeah, sort of narratively, even though this isn't really a plot driven book anyway, narratively, uh, just a bit more resolution for me uh, would have been better. But that's a real personal one. And overall, I don't think it damaged the book too much. I was just a little bit like, ah, I would have liked a little bit more. Overall, I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, I didn't think I was going to. Uh, I thought it was going to be a bit of a sort of like a, a Sally Rooney ripoff or, you know, I was just going to be a bit, it was just going to be a bit too like I couldn't connect or sort of to any of the material. Obviously, uh, not being a middle-aged woman uh, pre-menopausal, am I going to be able to find stuff to relate to in the material that's going to sort of connect and help me and educate me? And it did. It really did. I mean, some of the sort of sexual desire stuff felt like it was just in there for the sake of being in there, for the sake of feeling raw. Um, however, there is something in that real honesty that threads itself throughout the book that I just really connected to. And I was glad that it stuck to it uh, for better or worse in moments. And I felt that showed integrity from the writer in that moment. So I'm landing on a like a 3.4, no, 3.4, 3.5 stars. Four star sort of rating. I, I actually, I whistled through it so quick. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So sad times, sad times, file corrupted, it's sad times. If you are looking for a novel that dives deep into the challenging areas of identity, sort of sexual identity and sexual desire, and our desires in general, and what happens when we reach out and grab onto those desires, uh, and the sticky tricky things that come within the aftermath, and the sort of present idea of being in them, uh, then I think you're going to really enjoy this novel. So have you read all fours? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.